goals. What do you specifically want or need from your scene partner? And what does it cost you if you don't get it? Or what do you lose if you don't get it? The best way to find out what you want from your scene partner is to ask yourself what do you want them to do, feel, or understand. And this will be a relentless pursuit from basically the beginning of your scene till the end of your scene. Results. Did you get what you specifically wanted from your scene partner? Yes or no? Commit to something, one way or the other. I've been really lucky to work on both sides of the audition camera, both as an actor and then as a reader and as a director. And one of the most common mistakes I see is actors not committing to a completion of their scene. There's no indication as to whether or not they got what they wanted or not. So it eliminates the reason to even have the scene in the first place. Make a choice. Did you get what you wanted from your scene partner? Yes or no? It's much better to make a wrong choice and have the director or cast director ask you for a different direction than to come in and give a maybe kind of sort of response, which really just looks like you're unprepared. So yes or no, did you get what you specifically wanted or needed from your scene partner? So now that we know the result as to whether or not we achieved our goal or didn't achieve our goal in terms of what do we specifically want or need from our scene partner, how do you feel about it? There's four basic human emotions. There's mad, there's glad, there's sad, and there's scared. How do you feel about the result? Try to avoid the basic words like mad, glad, sad, or scared. Find something a little bit more uh, specific on the spectrum of any one of those four emotions. But how do you feel about it? We should be able to see that at the end of your performance. It needs to have affected you. There needs to be an emotional change in every scene. There needs to be conflict in every scene. And this is part of the process and part of the preparation that lets us know that you've done your homework. Assertion. This is a fantastic tool in both your preparation, but also something you can use just prior to the audition and just prior to performing on set or on stage. I am, insert your character's name, and the world is, insert how your character feels about the world. What this does is it ensures that you have the right tone or the right paradigm for how your character sees the world at this exact moment in time as we're about to deliver this scene. Remembering acting is real life with the boring bits cut out. So this scene has to have some level of importance to your character in order for it to have some level of importance to the audience. So I am blank and the world is blank. I wouldn't necessarily do this out loud on set or in the audition room, but it's something I would close my eyes and I would just repeat it over and over and over again to make sure that I launch into the scene with the right emotional connection or the right perception of how the world is as opposed to limping in and finding it midway through. Tactics. This is how we pursue our goal. This is how we convince people. This is how we navigate around the obstacles, the words, the actions, the environment, the things that are trying to prevent us from achieving our goal. Now our, tax, our tactics are actions we do to people. The way we can identify if it's a tactic or not, or a useful tactic, is if it fits in this sentence, I blank you. I question you. I interrogate you. I kick you. I push you. I kick you. I hug you. We can do all of those sorts of things with words or actions. I flirt you. Doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but I seduce you, I flatter you, I praise you, I compliment you. Those are all different ways that we can try to uh, seduce or flatter or compliment or flirt our way into achieving our goal. But be specific. Find out exactly what it is that you're looking for. And when a tactic is working, let us know that you feel good about it. And when it's not working, we should see that you're frustrated or disappointed. One of the more difficult things for actors is to read a script a hundred times over, know what's gonna work well in advance, know what's not gonna work well in advance, and then have to stand in front of a camera and deliver it like it's all brand new, like it's all fresh, but that's your job. So make sure that when you are delivering these tactics, you deliver them with the expectation of success and you show us excitement or uh, positive energy when you're winning and you show disappointment or frustration when a tactic isn't working and when a tactic isn't working perhaps you try a new line of tactics and when it is working perhaps you take that tactic to a next level obstacles 
These are the things that specifically get in the way or try to prevent us from getting what we specifically want or need from our scene partner. Their actions, their words, their environment. It's the classic uh, trinity of conflict. Person versus person, person versus self, person versus environment. What is getting in your way or, or what is trying to slow you down in achieving your goal from your scene partner? Identify it and use a tactic to try to navigate around those obstacles. Personalizations. If it's not real to you, it's not real to us. Ask yourself if you have anything in your real life that parallels both the goal and the stakes for what's happening in the scene. For example, if you were uh, auditioning for a character who is being interrogated by the police for a crime you didn't commit, do you have anything in your life that resembled something like that, where you were about to lose your freedoms for something somebody else did because you were being interrogated by authority? Did your parents at any time in your life uh, lecture you or, or, or threaten to ground you for something your sibling did? Or did you ever have an experience with a principal or a high school teacher who perhaps uh, was threatening to suspend you for something somebody else in the school did, but you couldn't, you couldn't rat them out for whatever reasons? Find something in your real life that has a parallel sense of goal and stakes for whatever's happening in the scene. There's going to be times where you don't have anything and that's okay. And that's where we use something called an as if. And that's where we imagine as if something like that happened. So let's use that same police scenario and you had nothing in your life where you've ever been falsely accused and had your freedoms threatened. You have to imagine what would it have been like if my parents threatened to suspend me or take away my car or whatever for something my brother or my sister did. What would that feel like? That's what helps us connect to the scene. That's what helps us better understand the character from a more personalized approach. We refer to that as a personalization. Environment. A lot of times when I've been in the audition room on both sides of the camera, uh, I've noticed actors uh, treating the audition process like it's a stage play and we're all back here and the audience is all out there and uh, we're, we're delivering it without really factoring in the rest of the elements of the room. Um, you know, we want to keep our eye lines close to camera. We want to look at the reader as our main person we're speaking to in the scene. But we also want to have very specific eye lines when we look at things and we want to know where things are. If there's a door over here, identify where the door is and know that the door is right there. If you want to have, uh, you know, somebody who's uh, way back there. Yeah, there. Know where people are. Map it out on the back of your script. Do whatever you have to do. So when you're on the audition, you're not focused on the camera. You're not doing a stage play. You're not doing a monologue. You're doing a scene with another actor and you have to envision the rest of the environment. And what else is going on here? Is it just the two of you? Are there lots of people around? Is it, you know, daytime, nighttime? There's all these different things that affect your environment and, and how you're going to play the scene. So make sure that you Incorporate all of that when you're blocking out your scene, know where your, your key set pieces are, know where your key eye lines are, and when you step in front of the camera here, make sure that you identify some key things in the room so that you're not just sort of looking off into generalized space here, but find something specific. Look at something specific, and then look at another thing that's specific, and then go back to your reader. And then you're looking at your reader, and you've got these very specific things and creating very specific eye lines, and now you've helped us uh, suspend disbelief, and you've created an environment that makes sure an entire higher performance look more authentic. Relationships. This is much more than their specific relation to you in terms of mom or dad or what their occupation is, police officer, doctor, dentist. That isn't what we're talking about. When we talk about relationships, we want to know what your history is and we want to know, most importantly, how do they make you feel? Here's an experiment. Go to 10 different people and say, what's the first word that comes to mind when I say police? You're going to get 20 different answers. You're going to get everything from uh, authority, hero, to crook, to corrupt, to cruel. You're going to go ask somebody the uh, same question about the word mom. You're going to get from loving, caring, to overprotective, meddling, crazy. You're going to get a whole bunch of different ideas. So when you're trying to articulate who you're speaking to in a scene or what your relationship is with them, it's not enough to say, well, it's a police officer. 
Okay. Are they good at their job? Why are they good at their job? How do they make you feel? Do they make you feel scared? Do they make you feel comforted? Find words that uh, have a better uh, explanation in terms of how they affect your universe. And find words that you can view upon another reader. Because you may have a scene where you have somebody you're acting against and, and you're deathly afraid of them. But if you only can envision it's got to be like a six foot eight guy with a huge mustache or whatever. And you walk in and you got a, 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 a young lady who's 80 pounds and four foot six or something. And the only thing you're prepared for is to act with this giant monster of a, a, a man that's, that's not going to play. So find words in the relationship that you can imbue upon any reader. They intimidate me, they scare me, they comfort me, uh, I trust them. Find words that you can imbue upon anybody. And one of the first things you should do when you walk into the room is really make sure you imbue those two, three, four qualities onto the reader so that when you start the scene, that is your paradigm to that person. That's your relationship. Last but not least, it's age or time. Time is probably a better answer, but then this would be called the great operant, and that just sounds ridiculous. There's basically three types of time or age in a scene. There's the time of day. Is it morning, noon, night? And how does that affect how you play it? A conversation that happens at 3 a.m. is probably delivered differently than a conversation happening at noon. Um, is it past, present, or future? think in terms of the context of what's happening in the scene. Um, we recently shot a, a film in Vancouver a few years ago called Big Eyes, and it was shot uh, primarily in the 50s and 60s, and one of the main thematic ideas of, of, of the film was the level of misogyny that was existing in the world at the time, and that had to come across authentic. You couldn't have looked through the lens of 2019 eyes as to what you would have done in that position if you were in their shoes. You had to play it as though, well, in the 50s or 60s, this is what the norms were. So how do I represent that truthfully? And the last and uh, final piece of the time equation is what's the time of your life? Movies are, TV shows and all of it is rarely made about uh, that time in your life where nothing was really going on and things were just kind of rolling around. I was like, no, it's this is the time where I met the love of my life or this is the time where that girl died in my town or this is the time in my life where I was becoming a, a, a adult from teenager. This is the time in my life where I was dealing with my alcoholism. This is the time in my life where my grandma died. There's always a time in your life and that will greatly affect how you play the scene. If you try to just play it from your own time of your life, you're not gonna have an authentic connection. It's not gonna be believable to you. And when it's not believable to you, it's not believable to us.